Welcome to another video. In this one, what we'll cover is the typical computer science problem of how to make an optimal change set given the amount of change that you need and the coins that you can do it with. We'll do this with standard coins first and then we'll look at how we can change the coin set. Let's get started. So what is the change making problem? The change making problem is a typical interview question if you're trying to get hired as a developer. What it asks you to do is to create an algorithm that gives you the optimal amount of coins back for a given set of change. Examples would be, if you needed 4 cents, you would return 4 coins for the 4 pennies. If you had 6 cents, you would return 2 coins for 1 nickel and 1 penny. So let's look at how we can create an algorithm that would take the amount of cents first and then return us the optimal amount of coins. We'll do this with the standard US coins first, so the amounts of 1, 5, 10, and 25, but after that we'll look at how we can do this with any coin amounts and any coins. We'll open up a text editor, and to do this with standard coins all we need to apply is something called the greedy method. What this method says is that we should take the highest coin values first and see if that goes into the total change that we need. If it doesn't, then we go down to the next coin and so on. If you'd like to try to solve this problem on your own, pause the video here and then come back for the solution. The solution with standard coins would look something like this. We'll say def to declare a function and then we'll say our function is called number of coins. And now the only parameter that this function needs to take in is the total amount of change that you need to give back. We'll call this variable cents. We'll put a colon and drop down. And then we'll say the coins available to us in a list will be 25 for a quarter, 10, five, and one. Next, we'll go ahead and make a count variable and set this equal to zero. We'll just use this variable to count the total coins that we need to give back. Now, the way that we'll do this here is we'll use a for loop. There's probably plenty of better ways to do this, but a simple way for explaining is to use a for loop. So we'll say for coin and coins, put a colon and drop down. And now we'll use a while loop. So we'll say while since, so this variable here is greater than or equal to the coin amount. We'll say since is equal to since minus coin. And then our count will go up by one. So count equals count plus one. So what we're saying is that while the total amount of change is higher than the coin value, we'll just take that amount of change minus it by that coin value and then add one coin to our count. And then when that amount of change is no longer higher than the coin amount, we'll just go to the next coin in our coin list. Since we want our function to return the total number of coins, we'll drop down and deindent over and say return count. Because the count variable is what is counting the number of coins that we need. Let's test it out. We'll drop down and say print number coins, and then let's pass in eight cents. I'll open up a terminal and type in Python three and standard coins.py is the name of my script. We'll execute. And we see that we get four coins. So we would have one nickel and 30 pennies. Let's change this to 11. Now, when we save and execute, we should get two, which we do. And then we'll try one more. We'll say 32. We'll save and execute. And we get one quarter, one nickel and two pennies. This algorithm works anytime that you have a canonical change system. And that just kind of means that it was built to work this way. But what if you have a different change system that's non-canonical? Let's look at how we would build a similar algorithm using coin values that we make up ourselves. I'll go ahead and open up a new script. And now to solve this one, it will be a little bit more challenging. What we need to use is a concept called dynamic programming. Dynamic programming just means that we take a large problem and break it down into subsets of that problem. We'll break this problem into multiple subproblems. And how we can do that is we need to create a matrix that will go through the possible ways to get the value using each coin. But first we need to create that matrix so we can optimize it later on. We'll do this by saying DEF. We'll put an underscore and say change matrix. And this needs to take in the coin set and then the change amount. We'll put a colon and drop down. Then we need to create a variable called matrix. And we just need to put in a placeholder for every value in this matrix. So we'll put two square brackets. We'll say our placeholder value is zero. And we'll do this 4M in range of change amount plus one. So the range function doesn't include the last number of the change amount. So that's why we're adding one here. So now this is one matrix that has a length of the change amount. Now we need to add a row for each of our coins. We can do this by saying another four M in the range of the length of the coin set. And then we'll do plus one. So what we're saying is that we want a matrix that has the row length of the range of the change amount 
So whatever our change amount is, that will be the length of each individual row. And then the rows that we want of our matrix will just be the length of our coin set plus one. So however many coins that we specify in our coins list will have that many rows in our matrix plus one. That's because we need to make a default row in our matrix. We can make this default row by saying for i in range of our change amount plus one. So this is saying for every value in one of those given rows, we'll drop down and say our matrix. We'll specify the first row of the matrix and we can do this using a zero in square brackets. And then we can specify the individual values by using that i variable that we denoted here. Now we're saying for every value in the first row of our matrix, we want those values to be equal to i. So essentially we just want them to count up one by one. Then we need to return the matrix. So now we have a function to create a matrix where the first row of that matrix will just count one by one. Now let's look at how we can make an algorithm that uses this matrix to optimize the number of coins. We'll say this function is called change making. And then it will take in similar arguments here. So we'll say coins and then change. We'll put a colon and drop down. We'll go ahead and create a matrix using this function. So we'll say matrix is equal to change matrix. And then we'll pass in coins and change. And now how we need to optimize this matrix is we need to see if there's a better way with each of the coins to get to each individual value within that matrix row. We can do this by using two for loops in Python. We'll say for C in range of one to the length of the coins plus one. So we're starting at the one position because there's no way to make a zero with any amount of change. And then we're going to the length of the coins plus one because the range function doesn't include the last value. So that's why we add the plus one. And then for the row, we'll say for R in range of one change plus one. We'll put a colon and drop down. So our for loop is constructed in a way so that for each coin, we're looking through that coin's value in its given row of the matrix. Now we need to create the logic that happens whenever that coin's value is higher, lower, or equal to the amount of change that you need. If coins C minus one, this C minus one might be a little confusing at first, but remember that the indexing is slightly different with the coins variable. It starts at zero while our range starts at one. So that's why we're putting a minus one here. So we're just looking through each of the coins. So if the given coin is equal to that given R in our change amount, then the matrix at that position, so C and then R is equal to one. It's equal to one because we just need one coin to get to that change amount, which is that coin's value that we're currently on. So we put a one to denote that we only need one coin. Now what happens if the coin's value is greater than the amount of change that you need? We'll say, an else if statement. So if that coin value, C minus one, so that individual coin is greater than the total amount of change that you need at that spot in the matrix, we'll say that that position in the matrix, so matrix C R is just equal to the same value in the matrix of the previous coin. We can do that with matrix C minus one, and then at the same position. What we're saying here is that the coin's value is greater than the value that you need at that current spot in the matrix, then there's no better way to get to that total amount. Therefore, we should just take the total amount from the previous matrix and set that equal to this matrix position. Now what happens at the coin amount, total amount that we need at that spot in the matrix? All we need here is an else statement because we have the other two conditions here. The matrix at that position, so CR, will be equal to the minimum amount of the previous matrix, so we'll just go up and copy this and paste it here, or one plus the matrix C, and then R minus coins C minus one. So this line of code may look complicated, but once you break it down, it's really not. We're saying that the coin value is above the total value that we need at that spot in the matrix. All we want to do is to look back at the previous matrix and see if that value is better than the value that we get here. What this little bit of code here is doing is looking at the matrix in the same row because we're still in C and looking back at a previous position within that matrix. So let's say for example that we had dimes at the value of 10 cents. If this was the R position of 20, so we're looking at how to make 20 cents in our matrix, we could just go back and look at how we made 10 cents. If we saw how we made 10 cents was using one coin, all we would need to do is to add one to it. This line of code is working the same way. We're just looking back into the same matrix row 
and seeing if there's some number that we can add one to to get to the total value in our R column at that point. And then we're using the min function here to just optimize our solution to whichever value has less coins involved. Once you understand this line of code, you've pretty much unlocked the problem. Now all we need to do is to dindent back over and we'll say return matrix, the last one in the last position. Now we'll drop down and say print change making, which is just the name of this function here. So change making, we'll pass in our coin list. So let's say that we've gotten rid of nickels. So we have one, 10 and 25. And let's say that we're trying to get to the value of 32. Our previous algorithm would have looked at this number and used a quarter first. Then without nickels available, it would have had to use seven pennies. So the total number for that algorithm would have been eight. But here we know that the better solution is to not use a 25 coin. Instead, you should use three tens and two ones. This would give you five total coins being used. We should be able to get the answer of five using this algorithm. I'll go ahead and save my file and open up a terminal to execute. We'll type in Python three. And the name of my file is arbitrary coins, arbitrary coins.py. When we execute, we see that we get an error list index out of range. Let's go up and look at, okay. So I accidentally typed this wrong. This shouldn't be a plus. This just needs to be a comma. Now we'll save our file again. And this time we should expect to get five, which we do. We can go down and we can change these values to any coins that we want and we can put in any value that we want as well. If this is your first time using dynamic programming, this sort of problem may seem pretty complex. However, once you understand it, it unlocks a lot of new possibilities in your Python scripts. If you have any questions or comments about this one, please let me know. Until next time. 